Hi friends, in this video, we are going to see what is the effect of biasing on a transistor. So, the heading is bias transistor. Biasing is nothing but applying external voltage. So, in order to make transistor operate as amplifier, we need to bias it properly. So, based upon uh, external voltage polarities, the transistor act in following regions. So, the first region is active. Second is cut off. And third is saturation region. Now, there are two junctions in a transistor, and that is emitter base and collector base or you can say base to collector. So, these two junctions need to be properly operating. What does that mean? In active region, base emitter junction that we call as JE. So, this junction is forward bias and second junction that is base collector. We call that as a JC is reverse bias. Cut off region, both the junctions are reverse bias. Whereas, in saturation region, we apply external voltage such a way that both the junctions are forward bias. Now, we will see a working of a transistor in active region. That means, we are going to apply external voltage such a way that base emitter junction will be forward bias and base collector junction will be reverse bias. Let us see how we are going to do this. I will take NPN transistor first. So, NPN transistor is like this. This is emitter, base, collector. So, we need to apply external voltage to this terminals such a way that base emitter junction is forward bias. And base collector junction is reverse bias. So, these are the two supplies namely VEE and VCC. The polarity is selected such a way that this junction is forward bias and this junction is reverse bias. Let us see what happened exactly. So, for that, I am going to draw one more diagram having layers. So, this is a layer diagram of a NPN transistor. This is emitter region, base region and collector region. 
and the external supplies are applied like this. this is V and this is VCC. Now, as all of you know, this emitter is highly doped. So, it is having electrons as majority charge carriers. Since this emitter base junction is forward bias, this depletion layer will have very small width so that it will break. Base is a P type and it is very lightly duped. So, it is having very less number of holes. Now, this is a collector having a moderate duping. Now, whenever such condition is there, what will happen exactly? So, this particular junction which I call as J1 is forward bias that means electron from emitter region will move towards a base. So, movement of electrons is possible under the supply voltage Ve. So, this junction is forward bias. So, electrons will move from emitter to base. So, electrons will flow from emitter to base constituting emitter current. So, the direction of emitter current will be like this. Now, some of electrons from emitter region will recombine with these holes present in the base. So, number of holes in the base are very less so, very less recombinations are possible and that will constitute a small amount of base current. So, the direction of base current will be like this. So, remaining electrons will cross over this junction collector base and will try to flow in a collector region and from this collector region to positive end of VCC. So, this is a flow of electrons. So, this flow of electrons will constitute collector current and the direction of collector current will be like this. So, what is happening? Let us see once again. So, under the influence of VEE, electrons from emitter region will move towards base. In a base, there are few holes are present as base is lightly duped and it is a P type. Some of electrons from emitter will recombine with this base constitute a base current. So, here the direction or a flow of electrons will be like this. So, from the emitter, some electrons will recombine with the holes present in base constitute a base current in this direction and maximum electrons will flow from emitter to collector or you can say in a collector, maximum electrons are collected and that will flow to the positive terminal of a VCC constituting a collector current IC. So, here I will give the name IE is emitter current. IB is a base current and IC is a collector current. Being a lightly duped region, this base current is very small. If I write in terms of units, it will be in micro ampere. Whereas, if I apply KCL over here or in logic also, what I can get a emitter current has to be the addition of base current and collector current. The IB is very very low. So, what I can say over here 
this implies collector current is almost equal to emitter current in a transistor so this is what happening inside a transistor when you are biasing for a active region let's see the same thing for pnp transistor so the diagram will be like this this is a pnp transistor with the terminal as base emitter collector now i am forward biasing this base emitter it will be like this and reverse biasing base collector so the direction of currents will be like this this is the emitter current ie base current will be like this and collector current will be flowing like this again if i draw the layer diagram the working is similar to that of a npn transistor except electrons there are holes as majority charge carriers so this is a base emitter collector holes are majority charge carriers because it is pnp and electrons are minority charge carriers in base and collector is moderately doped so this is the external voltage vee and vcc again same concept under the influence of this vee holes will try to flow from this direction and that will constitute a emitter current ie so this holes will move towards a base few holes will recombine with the electrons present in the base region and constitute a base current remaining maximum proportion of holes from emitter region will be collected in the collector region constituting a collector current ic here also same concept emitter current is the addition of base current and collector current since base current is in microampere because base is lightly doped hence i can say emitter current is approximately equal to collector current thank you